Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in the Cube, and in this video, we are going to be looking at an item from Alex Garcia over at Smart Power BI, where he created a report to analyze Performance Analyzer itself. It's pretty cool. Let's take a look. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, Alex Garcia, Smart Power BI, he's got a blog. And in that blog, he walked through a report that he created, which actually looks at the results of Performance Analyzer and gives you some visual indicators about what's going on and maybe where you should go focus or, hey, is everything all right? I'll have a link to the blog down in the description below, and you can go and get the files associated with this from that blog. There is a little bit of setup that you need to do from an Excel perspective, but his blog walks you through it. It wasn't that difficult to figure out. All right, enough of all this talking. You know how we like to do it here on Guy in a Cube. Let's do what? Let's head over to my machine. In order to actually analyze Performance Analyzer, we need to get some Performance Analyzer data. And so we're going to start with a blank page. If you're not sure why I'm doing this, check out the video I did where I talked about why I start with a blank page. I'm going to go to View, Performance Analyzer. We're going to start recording and then go over to the report in question, which is my overview tab. It's going to go and collect a bunch of stuff here. I'm not actually going to look at this here, but what's important is this export item. And we can go ahead and dump out this JSON file. This JSON file is what's important and what you're going to need to feed into the report that Alex Garcia created. So now that you have that, you'll end up having to update some of the Excel files that he has just to make sure that everything's lined up and it knows what to go grab. And you'll have to do some power query tweaking in his report to make sure it's pointing to the right file. He calls all that out in his blog. So for this adventure works report, let's take a look at what actually happened. We can see here that this report wasn't too bad. So the actual page took about 2.5 four seconds total. And we can see that here that it was, and it's rated good. And it's got kind of the scale of what those thresholds are. The thing I love about this report is you can go into the main Excel file that he's got. You can update all these thresholds. So if you want to handle something a little different, go for it. At the five second mark is where it starts getting out of green. And I, I agree with that. Five seconds is usually the main threshold. And so number of standard visuals without slicers. That's nice. There's seven here. They're calling that high. That's something to keep in mind. We preach there on guy in a cube is keep it clean, keep it simple and less is more. Number of slicers on the report canvas is blank. They say that's good. And that's because I'm using the slicer panel. So I'm hiding that by default. Number of images in the report, number of custom visuals. So it's saying that there's one custom visual, which is high. Again, this is something that you may or may not agree with. And you can adjust that in that Excel file that comes with it and defines all of these items. Number of other visual elements on the canvas, number of DAX queries executed. So there's eight DAX queries. So remember, one or more queries per visual and then total DAX execution time along with number of rows retrieved. And then what I also like is down below the listing of all the items that it's actually going after. And it's got green and some recommendations. This is something you could incorporate into something like your center of excellence. If you have different recommendations for your organization, you could tweak these items and then further incorporate that into your center of excellence to make sure that there's consistency across your organization. So let's take a look at another report, which is our perf report, which we use to show off troubleshooting performance. And one thing you'll see here is it's saying the loading is good because it's under five seconds. Number of visuals is good. I don't have a lot of visuals on there. They're mainly just slow. And then number of slicers, everything looks kind of okay. Number of DAX queries executed is kind of the same. And then DAX execution time here is very high. And that's because of our matrix that's in there that takes about 2.4 seconds. And that's also calling out the number of rows retrieved is kind of a problem point. The other thing I love about this report, this is just the overview page. There's other pages here. The one that that's really interesting is this action Gantt chart. Here you can actually see a breakdown and these gray areas are waiting times. And then the colors are where it's doing something else. And so this purple color, hopefully you can see it as purple. This is this big color in the middle. That's where it's actually executing the DAX query. Here we can see that that's kind of the bulk of all of these. And then you can see this really, really big matrix. That's where the bulk of the time is being taken up. So you can kind of visually see like where your bottleneck is, which is great. I love that. Let's take a look at one more. I created this bad tab. And all I did was I basically grabbed all of the visuals from the overview page, but I multiplied it. I went bananas with these, right? Something you should never do. Please tell me you're not doing that. 
took overall 5.2 seconds, which is not horrible. Number of visuals is calling out is extremely high. Yeah. And number of slicers is blank because there's no slicers on the page. Number of custom visuals is eight because I just copied and pasted a bunch. Number of DAX queries is only eight. So this is kind of misleading because there's some caching in play because these visuals are all doing the same thing. And then max number of rows retrieved, 126. And then it goes through and you can see the execution time was 27, which wasn't bad. So overall, it's not bad just because I just copied and pasted them. So if they were all unique, this would probably be a lot worse. And if we go to the action Gantt chart, we can see the bulk of the time is just waiting. So reducing the number of visuals can help bring that wait time down. So this report can really help you dig in a performance analyzer. If you're not quite sure what to do with it, if you just want to get an overall snapshot of your report, this is definitely a first thing to go look at. When I'm going to help customers with items, this is probably going to be a tool in my tool belt that I'm going to use pretty regularly. So kudos to Alex for getting this out there and, and putting the work in to put it together. I highly recommend you go check it out. All right, I want to hand this over to you. What do you think? Did you think this report was bananas? Are you even using Performance Analyzer? Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.